My name is Gert Ter Haag. I'm from Holland. Um, I joined the Royal Veterinary College in Bordes Bar about a year ago as a senior lecturer in soft tissue surgery. My main area of expertise is ear, nose and throat medicine and surgery. Well, it might not be as apparent as some diseases, but um, I strongly believe that they are really handicapped when, um, when they start losing their hearing. Um, it is one of their main senses. It's more important for them than their eyesight and um, as important as their smell. So I think that a lot of old dogs that actually become depressive and, and, and less responsive have a form of deafness and people don't realize it. But um, they get deprived of all types of sensory stimulation and that's why they become more depressed, I think. So I think it's an important problem. Also because dogs that have lost their hearing or are becoming deaf may be startled more easily and may bite kids or other animals when they're scared. Um, they cannot anticipate any dangers coming to them for cars and stuff like that. So it, I think it's an important, it's an uh, important issue. It's, you have objective and subjective forms. Uh, obviously, if you clap in your hands or blow a whistle, if the animal's not looking, it can give you a little bit of an idea of if the animal can hear or not. Uh, but if you want to do it objectively, we use the same technique as they use in babies, where you measure the electrical responses that occur when a sound comes into the ear and then gets towards the brain. You can measure that. So if they can hear, you will have the generation of this electric potential. You can measure that. It's called brainstem evoked response audiometry, and that's used in uh, several practices. I think clinicians should be aware of the fact that there are several forms of deafness, and that unfortunately, like in people, some are not that easy to cure, but uh, some are. And in most instances, you would need more advanced diagnostic imaging, like CT scan, to make sure that the middle ears are completely normal. If they are abnormal, there's usually something we can do about it and then restore their hearing. And even for some inner ear abnormalities, um, there are treatments available now. Um, we can use some type of implants like they use in people as well to augment whatever is left there. So there definitely are options and I think most vets are not aware enough of the fact that actually this area is progressing quite rapidly and with the modern technology a lot is possible.